you've probably already seen way too many videos on YouTube telling you how people were able to achieve amazing things just within 10 to 20 minutes of cursor usage. But no one is really talking about what is it really like to use it in production scenarios? What is it really like to use cursor day in and day out? Well, today I'm going to show you my top eight picks of the amazing hidden features I've found in cursor after two months of heavy usage. Two of the features that I found aren't even documented on Cursor's own website. Want to know what they are? Watch until the end of the video. I'm Ivan, a computer scientist turned tech founder who's been in the startup space for over the past decade, having built and scaled applications to millions of users. Right, we'll dive into feature number one, Cursor Rules. With Cursor Rules, it's a set of instructions that gets shoved into every single one of your questions that you pass to the LLM, whether it's in chat, in the composer that we can see with the command I, or in your inline commands where you press command K to actually get it. So this helps set the base tone of how you want the AI to respond, your preferred coding style, how you want it to debug, or even details about your tech stack that you prefer you want it to use. While cursor AI is pretty good at guessing most of the context, but the more specific or detailed instruction that you can give it, the more it can actually generate code reliably for you across the board. Well, if you have trouble setting up your initial cursor rules file, check in this website, cursor.directories. It has a whole bunch of starting cursor rule file templates that you can use for all of the technology stacks that you can possibly find. The one I took was actually exactly the first TypeScript one I found and added a few of my own custom rules on top. And that was more than sufficient to get started. There's another way that you can also set these AI rules is you can go straight into cursor settings, either by searching the command palette or press command shift J. You can set this rules for AI. This is basically a overarching dot cursor rules file that applies across all of your cursor projects, regardless of location. The most convenient thing about the dot cursor rule file is that you can commit it into a code base that's shared across all of your team members that, so that you can have AI generate code in a uniform standard across everyone's workspace. How great is that? Pick number two, command generations. Do you know that in cursor, you can just press command K inside the terminal to ask AI to generate commands for you. There are a lot of useful commands, but you just can't remember that arcane command line flag value. So in this case, let's say we want to do something crazy. Let's say we wanted to or JS files within this repo and suffix with creation date. Just with that enter, you'll find that the command is generated directly for you and even typed in, hit enter to run. Super convenient if you just want to run something really fast, which normally would have required at least one or two stack overflow lookups before you can remember the exact command line flags to use. Pick three, must know keyboard shortcuts. I know there are a lot of people who really don't like remembering keyboard shortcuts, but trust me, remembering this five is absolutely worth it. First one that comes to the list, Pressing Command P, that opens up the file selector, allowing you to go to any files really quickly. And you can also press Command K, for which is Cursor's headline feature for the inline editing tool. You can press the Command I if you want to bring up the composer view at the bottom, and Command Shift I for bringing up the enlarged composer view. You can also use Command Shift G to go directly to Git, your version control. Yes, please do use Git. I'll tell you more why later. You can then also press Command Shift E to go back. All of these shortcuts, the time it saves quickly adds up. Okay, now take number four. Now this has to go to the at codebase mentions. Uh, did you know that anywhere in your AI prompt within cursor, you can press at codebase to let cursor decide on what are the relevant files to pass in the context. So let's say. Here, we want to better understand the server logic of the audio exporting. It's explain to me the audio exporting logic. You can see the add code base searches and supplies the relevant files directly within the cursor context and goes through ex explaining how the audio exporting actually works in my project, walking you through with words and code. 
it's not great when you're walking into a fresh code base to understand what it's actually trying to do. So this also works when you're trying to make edits to the code. You can also mention add code base. But one pitfall for the add code base is that it can quite often bring in it can often bring in way too much context. So if you know the exact context you can supply it, it's always better to supply the exact files you need to give it. Because when you give AI way too much information, it tends to get a little bit confused with what to output. So bear that in mind when using this. I know many people initially think that it might just supply the entire code base. That wouldn't have been possible to supply into the code base with that much context. What happens underneath the hood within Cursor is that it actually indexes your entire code base and creates a full local embeddings database that it searches through when you generate the queries. So based on your queries, it automatically finds through a mini LLM all of the relevant files it needs to supply into the context. So that's how you can actually do it quite efficiently. So you never have to worry about, it, especially if you're using your own API keys, that it's wasting too much of the context by shoving in the whole code base. So the rule of thumb, if you don't know what the exact files are you need to supply into this request, use add code base whenever, but do use it sparingly as accuracy varies. Now, feature number five. With Cursor, there's so many things that you can actually customize because all of the LLMs are only trained with information up either end of last year or at best the beginning of this year. But when so many of the libraries are evolving and actually releasing new features on the go, you want to make sure that you're using the latest features possible. What Cursor allows you to add custom docs website, which it will scrape and index and have the capability to use that as part of the context for LLM queries. Let's say here, let's say we've been using a lot of the latest releases of Next.js. We can add in the Next.js doc just here. Specify it's for Next.js. There's a prefix, confirm. It will then go in to scrape all of the websites, index them one by one. You can see all of the page links are directly there. Let's say we want to ask Next.js about and how do, how do I do off? It knows the relevant pages to search through and finds you the latest information that's based on the page. So you never have to worry about a length having out of date training material, but you do have to know that which one are the libraries that are using newest features that you have to have to manually import the docs for. So do bear that one in mind. Another cool thing is that Cursor actually constantly rescrapes all of the documentation websites. So you don't have to manually update any of the docs as new features are getting released. So you always have access to the latest information. From my experience, the information updates about on a daily basis. So you should never miss anything else. Now, moving on to feature number six. Funnily enough, Cursor actually rolled out the update just as I was recording this video. You probably noticed the update cursor thing on the bottom left as I was recording the previous sections. I up updated and it actually renamed one of the features I'm talking about. And so now we're talking about Notepad inside the Cursor Composer. Uh, Notepad is this amazing feature that you can bring in that sits in the top left of your Composer that you can specify specific more detailed context. Maybe this is of a feature that you're implementing of a system components. You can decide how you want to structure it, but you can have this as a ready set of context. You can give it to Cursor. On the bottom right of the page, you can also select the relevant files to the things that you're looking to implement. You can also leave things out if you want to let Cursor figure out what are the files that are relevant. So here I've selected all the routes, which are the backends, and written some simple descriptions here. You can just directly mention a notepad. Let's say we're mentioning the backend notepad. Let's remove the existing file. Provide very little context. Let's say add a new feature for add user logging. Wait for the apply to happen. You can see without even providing any additional context, which normally requires you to write relatively long prompts. Cursor now knows the context of, oh, you're applying to the backend. This refers to logging the user actions based on the server API interactions, then just go straight in to actually generate the code, which is quite amazing. 
So if you're working on especially larger projects, larger features, these contexts are especially helpful, allowing you to break down the feature implementation component by component. And one of the things I really like, instead of using just a suggested code view, I prefer looking at a diff view so that you can very easily see all of the changes the cursor are making. So here we can see that it added a log user action in the lib and then extracted out the users from the current session, then just logs all of the user actions across all of the different routes. It's not great. So this is one of the great examples of the features that you wouldn't need to use if you're just creating a toy project, but a feature that you would heavily use if you are working on a much larger project. I do wish though, Cursor provides a way for you to save the notepad as code in the repository so that your teams can actually share and maintain it. That would be super convenient, especially for larger repositories here. So this brings me swiftly onto the next feature, which is Cursor composes save versus accept. So you can see as part of every composer run that you have, there's this accept all and save all. It actually has very different behaviors, but as long as you don't click on accept, you can also see that if you just press save, it preserves the diff within the file without fully accepting the change. The good thing is, if you don't like the change or if you see Curtis made a mistake, you can either go in to directly edit it, or you can just reject the change completely as part of the composer run. If you go back into the composer, once you accepted it, you can see if we live out, the change is already applied, making it a quite a bit more difficult to revert changes. So the thing that you generally want to do while during the save is that try out a new feature, add it, test out the feature in the UI to make sure it's correctly implemented, then go back to accept the changes. Now coming up to the final pick, version control. Not technically a person native feature that would heavily suggest that you leverage from day to day or even from hour to hour. Because with all of the AI generation, the amazing thing that Cursor does is that you write code so quickly, you constantly add new features. But also I'm sure you've experienced that AI constantly breaks things. And as you have a working code base, having AI accidentally breaking something and find making it really hard to debug is quite annoying. But this problem can be completely solved if you just do frequent commits. The workflow I tend to get into, every time you have a working feature, you've finished a whole composer run, you've implemented a mini feature, add the files, commit it in Git. Let's say we're just like testing feature. Commit it in Git and then continue your working. Because that way, if anything that doesn't work, whether like you've accidentally hit a X or it generates some code that you found it incredibly hard to debug, then just get revert to the last working version. Isn't that super convenient? Because the team is shipping our releases so quickly that I actually had to accept an update right in the middle of recording this video. So it's been amazing to see the amount of new features that's coming in. And I'm sure many of you have seen that Copilot has also been trying to play a lot of catch up and made a big release very recently as well. But lately, I've also been spending time testing other similar AI coding tools like Super Maven and Codium. I will be doing more similar reviews as well as amazing hidden feature sharing in coming videos. If you like the content, like, comment, and subscribe below. See you in the next one.